Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Enigmatico 6. How are you guys doing today? How's life? It has been two episodes, no actually three episodes, since I wanted to automate Shulk Me Not. Have I done that? No. Why am I walking that way? It's this way. So let us do that. Uh, how are you guys doing by the way? 300 durability. Not the worst. So if we want to automate Shulk Me Not, we need Shulkers. We can summon Shulkers using Chorus Fruits, but I don't have any. Oh. Yes, we'll cut it out. Uh, this one is complete. Should we use it? I don't know. Uh, there is a book and there should be a guideline. Eternal Ritual. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Oh, that's it? So I just have to put it on top of the pedestals and it should get activated? Nothing happened. Oh, eight pedestals. This is only six. Um, can you craft it? You know what? We are going to mark it on the map and try to find more pedestals. I'm not even sure if it's going to work. What the hell are you? Spectre? Uh, we have to take a sample home. Obviously. You know, last episode I was looking for obsidian. I forgot these things exist. Oh, an NCT. Perfect. If I'm not wrong, there is even a shulker spawner. You know what we can do? We can just go up, fire the missiles. Yeah, it's not gonna help that much. There are spawners down here too. I remember that the loot in the end used to be nice. Uh, this is garbage. So first off, I did find another one of these portals and then I noticed uh, you can't really break the pedestals. Secondly, I think the book is wrong. It's telling me 8 pedestals but the picture shows you 6. So I think this one is already complete. The problem is, I'm using the wrong crystal. Uh, we need this one which we obtain it through a ritual, which is called the infusion ritual. So we need one infusion pedestal and 8 pedestals of any other type. So here is the infusion pedestal. And it literally tells you 8 pedestals of any other type. It can be purple, right? Oh, this is expensive. Oh, what did I get myself into? Uh, we need ender shards, which you get it from a very special ore. Aha, uh -huh. ender ore. It's not very easy to find. I know that this is going to be very stupid for something that we are never going to use in our lives, but I really need to know what it does. Well, I know what it does, I just want to see if it looks cool. Of course, another question would be, are you affected by fortune? Oh, you are. Okay, I should have done that. We only need 24 and we have 21. So, the infusion pedestal and 8 other pedestals. That should work. As a person who does not have that much gas tears or glass or sand, this is a very expensive experiment. Uh, so, you go in the center. I don't really like how you look. And does it work? No. Ah, you have to arrange it in a very specific way. Okay. So, if I have not messed up anything, this should work. Are you kidding me? It's exactly the same thing. Maybe it has to be a specific type of pedestal, which they did not specify. What the hell are you? You guys have grown a bit. We try to find viola sites. Oh, it's here. I didn't notice. So here we go again. Let's hope it works. No? Yes, do you know what was wrong? You have to right click on the pedestal. That's it. So don't ask me why I had to go through that. I just wanted to see how it works. Oh, that is nice. It's going to take us to a new home. Are you? Where the hell is this? It takes you to the overworld. <laughs> well, we are a few thousand blocks away from home, but that's not a problem. We can just teleport. But this was kind of nice. I mean, if you're playing vanilla, that could have been useful. I was working on the Shulk Me Not setup and I have built most of it, the problem is that it's not very satisfying. We have already done this twice and the only thing that you have to do is to spawn a few Shulkers, let them hit each other and they will generate you mana. So instead, we're going to go with this guy and no, I'm not going to pronounce it. I cannot pronounce R and L in the same word. But generally the way that this guy works is that you have to provide it with different colors of wool. And guess what? It needs all 16 types of wool in the correct sequence that you see it in the JEI. What does it mean? Well, it means that if you place it down and you hold your wand of the forest, it's telling you it needs white wool, which is the first one in the JEI. Then if I drop a white wool, it is going to ask for orange. So what will happen if I give it orange wool? It is going to consume it, but it is never going to generate any mana. The sequence has to be correct. I thought this is going to be much more fun than spawning mobs. Although there is going to be another problem of getting a stupendous amount of wool, which I don't really know how to solve it. Anyways, we have 16 color of wool, so we need 16 droppers. I'm not exactly sure, can we go up by 32 blocks? 
uh, this is Y level 67. Oh, oh. No, 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 Yep. We can't go up. I wanted to avoid quasi-connectivity by having one block gap between each and every one of the droppers, so I wanted to just go up 32 blocks. And we can't do that. So we're going to have 8 droppers on each side. That should work. Yes, we have plenty of room to spare. So essentially, if we want to do this the Botania way, and if we want to have a decent supply of different colored wools, uh, we need 16 sheep farms for every single wool. But this is modded, we can cheat with refined storage. So in the back of every dropper, I'm going to have an export bus. And for a very weird reason, I find it very satisfying to place them. And I messed up, literally messing up the last one. Nice. The way that it's going to work is that we're going to drop the wool from each and every one of these droppers in sequence and they're going to drop on our flower. That's a button. The flower. Whose name I shall not mention for very obvious reasons. Of course, as usual, we're going to need a network receiver from refined storage so that we can have access to the droppers. And now, obviously, I have to work on a lot of patterns. I have set in all the patterns and then I realize what did I get myself into because it's not just the string or the wool, we need all 16 dyes. We can have a jaded amaranthus farm using botania but that's going to be too bulky. And then I thought maybe we go with a dye mixer from industrial foregoing? I'm not really sure what I want to do, hello. You were fast. Anyways, I was going to say I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do, but this is going to be a huge project. But let us get to the redstone bit. Well, obviously we can go with the vanilla redstone, but Botania has a very nifty solution. Mana detector. How does it work? Well, if you give it a burst of mana, it's going to emit a redstone signal. It's very faint, but I'm assuming you can see it. You know, with a lamp it should be much more visible. Yes. So each one of the droppers is going to get one mana detector. So we have 16 droppers and 16 mana detectors and we need to activate them in sequence. Which is easy, we just need a burst of mana and they drop stuff. Why did I get 7? Oh this was already 64. Let us try this one more time, just in case. We should get 8? I got 5. Ah, yes, 8. Of course we also have to cover the gaps because you know, items can get stuck. So how are we going to send that mana burst? Well, there is something called a pulse mana spreader, and if you give it a redstone signal, it's going to fire a burst of mana. The problem is, it's not going to go that far. That's the range. And we kind of needed to cover 32 blocks, so we're going to use a messenger lens. If we fire it again, look how far it goes. Oh, it's still going, okay. <laughs> that should be more than 32 blocks. Yeah. So we are going to start with a diluted mana pool because this guy is going to hold a minimum amount of mana. It's already full. This is incredibly useful if you want to send mana bursts. So we are going to have our pulse mana spreader there. And if we press the button, they should get activated. But as I have already mentioned, we want it to go very far. So with the messenger lens, it's going to be much better. However, one thing that you might notice is that this guy is sending mana on this column. What about this one? That is a very good question. For that, we're going to need a force relay, which is a piston in a mana pool. So if I put the force relay over here and then not break it, function mode? No. Yes. Just right click. No sneaking. So I'm going to bind that force relay to this block over here. And now see what happens. It's not gonna happen. You know what did I forget? A warp lens. Because you know, force relays only work with warp lenses. So now if I press the button, you should be able to see it in action. This side is active, now this side is active. Basically the mana burst is going to go to the force relay, it's going to be relayed to this cobblestone and then goes up again. Now what we need to test is that are we hitting all 16 mana detectors? I'm putting down leaves because I don't think they're going to transfer the redstone signal. Yes, we are getting all 16. Perfect. Uh, two of them fell here. So I have a problem. Gravity. Items take a very long time to fall down, correct? The problem is, my mana burst is actually traveling much faster than gravity is pulling the items down. What does it mean for us? Well, it means that before getting the 8th wool which is up here, we're going to get the ninth one which is down here. Cause you know, the mana burst is going up so fast and coming down so fast that before that guy can hit the ground, this one is falling down. The way that I think I have solved it is that I moved the force relay by, I don't know, like 7 blocks higher, and that should fix it. Cause you know, we're just trying to set up the time, that's it. But to give it a test, I'm going to put a diorite for the 8th one, we're going to have a leaf for the 9th one, and we're going to have a redstone lamp for the 16th one. Theoretically, I should get the diorite first, then the leaf, and hopefully the lamp. The lamp is to just check we get all of them. Okay. 
and we also got the lamp. That is what we want. I am also assuming that if we cover everything properly, nothing should be lost. Yep, we're good. So ladies and gentlemen, we come to the final test. I did fill in the droppers with some wool and we are going to see if this guy works. And just to make sure that everything is just going to fall down. Yes, it does. Okay, let us press the button and hope for the best. That went well. Huh. First try. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Uh, second try? Do you still work? I'm a genius. <laughs> I did not screw it up. You want white. Yes. Then ladies and gentlemen, we have a functioning system. We just don't have resources for it. Okay, now I need to find a very good source of string, which is not going to be spiders. Well, it can be spiders, but... Piglin bartering. This is one of the first times that we are not doing any bartering. What are we missing on? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, the only thing that I'm missing in my life is crying obsidian. The rest I don't really care. So it might look like that we are just making a string farm, but it's not as easy as you would think. Do you know why? So many choices! This is why democracy is garbage. Because if you don't have democracy, you don't have choices. You have only one choice, and that choice is the best choice. Because you don't have any other choice. But unfortunately, Enigmatico 6 is a democracy, so it's inefficient. Therefore, we need to make choices. Do we need to go with red fertilizer? Do we need to go with green fertilizer? Do we want faster growth? Do we want better yield? Do we go with flax? Or do we go with the other flax? Or do we go with canaf? 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 Whatever it is. Do we go with blackberry pie? Or do we go with mulberry? Well, actually, that is an easy one. We go with burgers. Do we go with create, which is incredibly fancy? Or do we just go with industrial foregoing because I am not in the mood for making cogwheels? And trying to make it symmetrical. This is already symmetrical. Are you? <laughs> yes. Should we pretend that we are making a farm and just cheat in a creative vending upgrade? Or do we cheat with Cyclic, a mod which is not in the pack, but I added it myself. I think cheating in a creative vending upgrade is frowned upon. We go with Cyclic. Sotero Pretzel. Place below farmland for sprinkle-like growth. I don't understand it, but it's growth. I can make biomass inside a solidification chamber, which is not that bad. It's really not that bad. I'm 100% sure that you're going to use every single wrong material. But let us see. Can you make 64? Of course not. Then why the hell do you have to choose that? Yes, a far better recipe. Don't ask me why I had to go with jungle leaves even though we're surrounded by mahogany, but I don't know, I just did that. I never said I'm smart, I just said I'm a genius. There is a difference. I cannot find more jungle leaves, we go with mahogany. So, so far this has been a terrible recipe. Uh, the thing is, you have to make biomass, then you need to make dry pit bog, which also requires biomass. And then you have to make the pretzel, and of course there's also a glass, which we have to make, which also requires the pretzel. And my farm is 15 by 15, so we need almost 450 of it. That's a bit. Can I even order 450 of it? Oh, okay, then it's easy. Who's in charge of crafting here? You're doing a garbage job. Ah yes, water is the problem, okay. Do you know what is the most important thing that we're missing? Sand. I still haven't made anything for it, I'm sorry. But this is cheap, and I need to try different types of food. So after a bunch of crafting, we have a lot of growth accelerators. And the way that I understood it, it has to be one layer beneath the farmland. Very good, very good. Now we need a layer of dirt. I'm assuming that should be fine, but we do also have the Osiris' blessing. Bless my farmland. That doesn't look very blessed. Tilled ground is blessed with increased growth rate. Are you blessed? I don't know. Osiris has always been weird. Since we are accelerating the growth of plants, we're going to go with green fertilizer. Because in theory, this should increase our yield. Well, not in theory, it actually does that. It doubles the yield. The only thing that we're missing is the actual crops. And honestly speaking, I think we're going to go with flax from autumn. Really doesn't matter which one we use, this one at least looks nicer. That one grew really fast. I just planted them. The land is blessed by the gods. It's 42% now. <laughs> okay. We're doing good. 
I'm not exactly sure what's happening here, but the rates are insane. I thought I'm going to need like 5 methods in order to boost the plant growth, well we are using a few of them, but uh, this is already good enough. It has been running for I don't know maybe around 10 minutes and we have 3300 flax. That was a great achievement, I'm happy. Also since it is harvesting crops at an insane speed, maybe we should get some sludge boilers. Refiners. That gives me dirt, clay, gravel and sand. Why the hell not? It's free. I'm missing blaze rods. Really? Also one thing that you should remember is that sludge in 1.16 is not going to affect the speed of the harvester, uh, it's just an added bonus. So you can use it, you can void it, you can do whatever you want. Are you going to push it? Yes. It's not a crazy amount of sludge, it gives you around 20 each time. I don't know, for some reason I was super excited. Let us see if it actually works. Pump it in. Some upgrades? Yeah, every 10 crop is equal one resource. Oh, I got a wandering trader. As a spawn egg. Oh no, it's just a llama. I still have not decided what I want to do with the dyes, but we do have all the patterns for all the wool. Uh, let us fill it in. You're going to be white. Now oh, you're gonna need speed upgrades, okay. Magenta. There is a very high chance I'm actually going to just go with the dye factory from Industrial Foregoing, but how the hell do you make magenta? Oh, pink and purple. So magenta is half great. Half terrible. And apparently this is how fast we are going to consume flax. We just lost 1000 in 30 seconds. Of course we should remember that it's filling up all the droppers and it's not going to be active at all times. So this should not be a problem. But one thing that I have discovered is that this guy actually gives you a crazy amount of mana. And by crazy I mean really crazy. Uh, let me empty the mana pool. The mana pool is empty. We are going to activate it only twice. This is one and number two. No jokes. So it just worked twice and this is the amount of mana it gave us. That's crazy, cause you can literally spam this every 5 seconds if you have enough wool. I just came to our mob farm and noticed that we're not actually gaining any mob drops, so I thought maybe in one of the updates something actually broke. I was checking everything and you are never going to guess what I found. A hole. I probably should not have added mana and artifice. Yeah that is the problem, you get mobs that you should not get. And they fight each other. It's okay, maybe I'll just remove it. Unfortunately for today, I'm actually unfortunately for today, I'm actually fed up with automation. I want to do something fun. There is something that some of you guys have been asking me, I don't know, maybe a month ago, and that was the Void Worm from Alex's mob. I'll be very honest with you, I have absolutely no idea what it does, but it's supposed to be a very tough boss or something. But I do know that we can use its drops in order to make something called a dimensional carver. It basically opens a portal from the end to the overworld. The thing is we also need some crimson mosquito larva and I actually got them from a wandering trader. So that part is okay but I also need something from the end. There should be a floating weird thingy and we need his tail. Uh, that sounded weird, uh, we need this guy. I don't even know where to look for them. But oh, this is a house. Interesting. And this is a really nice house. Very friendly. I'm assuming the whole point of having the better end mod is that, uh, well, you live in the end. Also, I am 100% sure that I have already seen the guys that we are looking for. Um, it's in one of those green biomes. You know, the first one that we spawned in. One of these biomes. Um, it's just that most of the biome is missing. Ah yes, I found the rest. So this is taking a while. Um, let me find him, then I'll bring you back. Yes, you have to look for them in the normal end. And that took me almost an hour. Or at least I'm hoping that's the guy. Yes, it is. And he drops it. Nice. Is this a joke? Okay. I didn't know we are allowed to make jokes about it. And I have to put the larva inside. I don't like that. Oh, okay. And that's going to give us mysterious worm. Oh, then you have to throw it inside the void. That's a very stupid thing to do. It just took me like one hour to get it. Anyways, here goes nothing. We run. Do we? Uh oh. Hello, my friend. Oh, you warped? I like you. Maybe not that much. <laughs> so, we have some missiles. That's probably going to help. He's like four or five pieces now. The rockets are not doing great because they're hitting the Enderman. Die, you jerk. Did you die? I think so. So, do I get any drops? Um, I have a magnet. Maybe it works? Is it not going to give me anything because I cheated with the missiles? Or did it fall into the void? 
So here is the deal, we're going to go to the main island. I don't know, just in case he drops it, I don't want it to fall into the void. Give me my mysterious worm, thank you. And give me my big worm. It's actually incredibly difficult to hit him. Unless we do this, we find where he teleports. He's dead. Nice. Uh, <laughs> look what I got. But still, I'm not getting any drops. It was in the middle of the island. I have been doing this for a while and I haven't found anything. But we do have a spawn egg. We can make a spawner out of him, if it works. I mean, I'm actually going to wait for you guys to tell me if it's worth spawning him, if he drops something. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.